Morning, everybody. It's David with davidspassage.com. We're continuing on in our wild edible series today. We're looking at morale mushrooms. I'm in an undisclosed location because one of the first rules of mushroom hunting, especially morels, is don't disclose where you find them because if you do, everyone else is going to find them too. You know, this area's got some pine trees, a lot of hardwoods, a lot of ground cover. We got a good rain the other day and it's been warm. And as you can see, I just found one right there. I'm going to show you how to identify them and talk a little bit about how I find them and uh, then also talk about how you can enjoy them. So, this is a yellow morel, different kinds of morels. You can see there's some leaves here. Indicate to me what kinds of trees I'm looking at. I'm looking at oaks, maples. Got some moss here. And that indicates to me the, the ground is fairly moist. And there she is. That's a yellow morel. There's two different kinds in my area that grow. There's the yellow kind and the black kind. There may be others too, but these are the two that I like to find, or that I tend to find the most right around now. It's the beginning of May. These tend to be found around trees, you know, especially if there's a lot of uh, trees that have died and are decaying. And the caps, you know, the, the top part, the part that sticks out, are, are pitted. And they're kind of honeycomb-like, they're, they're kind of spongy feeling. This is my, uh, my Leatherman Rebar multi-tool. And as you can see, this one's grown to about, about four inches tall. Now there are yellow ones like this and there are black ones, they're called black morels, and black morels have, you know, more of a darker outside, uh, or, you know, the tops of these pits are, are darker, but the, the easiest way to tell if it's a morel mushroom is to take it, you want to pinch the base, pinch down here at the base, and cut it, leave the root system intact, cut it. And when you see these, what you're going to notice is it's a hollow like straw. Okay? In the middle. If that's solid, if it's solid, it's not a morel. Okay, so I'm just going to split it open and it should split pretty easily. We're going to take a look at the inside of this. The core of this is hollow, but another thing that's very distinctive, it's got these little bumps on the inside there. And, uh,. That is a yellow morel. And these things are a prized find in my area. Grow on woods all over the place where I live. Wow, look at that, isn't that beautiful? Well, the way I like to eat them, I like to just saute them in butter, but you can also bread them and fry them. But you should always cook them before you eat them. <sighs> you gotta have a mushroom smell to them too. Another thing you should know is when you find one, you know, if you're walking through the woods, you're just stepping, be very careful, because as you step, you know, if you find one, there's a good chance there's a bunch more around you. And so I'm just kind of staying still, getting low to the ground, looking around to see if there's any more. And I'm already seeing a few more, so I'm being quiet, because I know there's other people around me here. The most sustainable way to harvest these is to pinch it at the base, use your knife and cut it off. You should never collect them in a plastic bag. You really want to collect these in a, either a mesh bag or something that's going to breathe, especially if you're going to be hiking around for a while finding them. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my schmog. My schmog is very breathable. I'm just going to lay it out and turn it into a little knapsack for the day. And collect them right in there. You know, just because of the way the, the leaves look on the ground, they blend in so well. So you have to be real careful where you step. Watch where you step. I see another one. And I already lost it. Boy, that's so easy to lose. Okay. Just to show you a little bit of the variety of how they grow. Now, if it's, this one is, uh, looks like, I'm gonna cut that top off, yeah. And if it's darker like that, or it looks like it's been decaying a little bit, you don't want those ones. 
You only want the ones that are, with morel mushrooms, you only want the ones that are nice and clean. And once again, once you find one, go real slow. Take your time, because there's often quite a bit more. I see another one right here. Just to illustrate how hard these are to find sometimes. You could, you really gotta take your time, because sometimes you get lucky and you get fine like this. It's uncovered a little bit. And there's one too. Right there. So what I like to do when I find one, <clears throat> every time I cut one, is to just take a moment and stop and look around. Because chances are if they're buried like that there, they're gonna be buried around your feet in other spots too. One of the things that's, that's also really handy to have is a stick because you're kind of, you're constantly fighting underbrush and things like that, kind of moving leaves out of the way and things like that in order to find, um, you know, in order to find the morels. And uh, also when you crouch down like I am now, it kind of helps give you a little support to just stop and, and look around at the ground and just kind of observe just to see if there might be any more. So far I've got, at least a couple pounds of these things. And I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna keep looking in this area. There's different ways you can cook them. The, the favorites tend to be either to saute them or to you know, fry them in butter and eat them like that. Um, and they're just so good. It's hard to describe the taste, they're just really good. What I'm gonna try this year, last year I found, I found so much, I just, I ended up giving them away because I just um, wasn't prepared to do it. But this year what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually take some and, and dry it. And if you dry it, stick it in a freezer bag and then stick them in the freezer. You cut them up first of all, you know, slice them in half at least, um, dry them, put them in a freezer bag. So in your freezer, they, they'll stay good for well, at least a year or two. Um, and then what you can do is you take them out, soak them for a couple hours, and then you can put them in whatever dish that is you're making, or you can saute them up. But they're, they're amazing with steak, they're great with fish, chicken, I mean, they're just, there's just such a versatile mushroom to cook with, so. All right, so found about five pounds. Just a few observations about where I found mine this year. And uh, mostly found yellow morels. I found them all within probably a 60 foot square area. Um, it was on a hillside that was kind of facing east, so they're getting the morning sun in an area of transition between a stand of pines and then kind of intermixed into that transition area where some hardwoods, a lot of dead fall and fallen debris that was sort of able to, to uh, coat the ground. A lot of moss in that area. Another observation I want to make is just about the weather in my area the past few days. It's been, it's been pretty dry up until this point in my area and um, just over the last couple days we've, we've had a significant amount of rain and then it warmed up. From what I've read and understand about mor morels, you're gonna start finding them when the temperature at nighttime is above 50 um, degrees and that sort of thing after good rain that sort so yeah I'd say today was pretty good in terms of a find and I'm gonna take these home and dry them I'm gonna give some to some friends yeah so thank you guys so much for tagging along appreciate you watching this video if you like this video definitely thumbs up share it with a friend 
tell your friends about the channel. I love learning with you guys and I love sharing what I'm learning with you guys about, about this sort of thing. So appreciate you all watching and we'll see you in the next video or we'll see you outdoors. Take care.